Hello. What have we got here this time? A Lafayette Communications Receiver, HF Communications Receiver. Nice piece of kit. Model KT340 says there, I've looked it up on the internet, there's also an HA230. Anyway, KT340, HA230 seems to be the same. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Um, so there we are. Covers, what's it cover? 0.55 megs to 30 megs. Um, instead of an RF gain control, IF gain, which is rather nice. Uh, band selector, aerial trimmer, noise limiter, ADC on or off. Um, Q multiplier. Yeah. Never found they work too well on these. Perhaps it's me. I've got I've got two of these. I've got three, in fact. Let's turn this down. I've got three, in fact. Um, two valve ones like this, identical, and the transistor version, which I don't like. Anyway, Q multiplier. Um, it, it improves selectivity uh, for the congested uh, sort of shortwave bands. You can use a Q multiplier. Um, where are you? There's the selectivity control that's used with that. Audio gain and then the sort of function switch there. Nice piece of kit. I think the 1960s? Yeah, probably 1960s. Um, I've got that on medium wave at the moment. Rather nice. You've got an S meter, which is good. I'll turn it off for a minute. Got an S meter, which is nice. That's useful. Uh, speaker output on the back, external speaker of course. Aerial input, you've got a balanced or unbalanced. I bought one of these. I must have been, let me see, I didn't have a car, so that puts me pre-17. <laughs> uh, I was probably 15 or 16 when I first became an apprentice in the radio and TV workshop. Need some adjustment on that. Um, <clears throat> bought one from a friend of mine went round to his place to have a look at it and he tuned around what was the trawler band between two and three megs at a tune round and he found this Morse code I said what's that he said oh it's a ship calling night and radio night and radio was a coast guard station on the Isle of Wight and we were listening on 2182 kilohertz uh, probably remember 2182 calling and distress frequency for the ships um, and I was you know, I was impressed wow he was a radio officer in the Navy, so uh, yeah, he could read Morse code pretty well. Uh, well he, he did it as a living, sending and receiving Morse code uh, for a living. Anyway, I bought the receiver from him, took it home. Um, remember lugging it home <laughs> and uh, set it up. I was amazed. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. Unfortunately, it's, it's gone. But I was amazed. I, I, I remember to this day set it up on my bench that I had in my little little shack as it was called then lived with my parents then of course garden shed uh, that was my shack plugged the aerial in tuned around absolutely amazed I was so impressed I was delighted um, really nice because I at the time I was used to you probably seen my 19 set video I was used to a 19 set receiver and this knocked spots off that. I mean, the 19 set receiver, brilliant, I love them. Um, but of course, using this, it was just incredible. Uh, one of the first things I did, tune around the amateur bands, yep, that's good. Trawler band, yep, that's good, yeah, a few fishing boats here and there, Coast Guard stations. And then uh, back to the old CCF network, 5.33 megs. <laughs> um, yeah, good old tune around there. Um, Excellent fun. I hooked it up. There's a socket on the back, by the way, um, like a, an octal type socket on the back. So you can hook it up to a transmitter. So when you, you press your mic button on the transmitter or whatever you switch it on, it uh, connects to this as a relay, which then disables the receiver. Otherwise, you you know you don't want to feed your your signal in straight into this. You get feedback and all sorts. So. Um, yeah, what I did, I used this with the 19 set transmitter. Uh, I remember spending ages hooking all that up. So yeah, great fun. Lovely receiver. As I say, I've got the transistor version. I think, is that the HA600A or something? Um, I don't like it, the 
transistor version, it uh, there's nothing inside. It's just like a glorified transistor radio when you look inside, and it it's, the selectivity is not that good, the sensitivity is not that good. The, the, the valve one here you know, is far superior. I found that with uh, I bought an Edistone EC10 transistor version of the original Edistone communications receiver. And I was so disappointed with that. Again, it was a glorified transistor radio. I don't know whether it's just me or... I don't know. Back in the days of these, it doesn't matter what make it was, the valve ones were good. Anyone that bought out a transistor version, I don't know, I couldn't get on with them. They just didn't seem... they just didn't have the life in them. Uh, yeah, obviously they worked, but they... I don't know. As I say, selectivity, sensitivity, just wasn't there on the transistor ones. There we are. I, mean, I don't know what happened to the receiver I bought from the, the friend of mine. Um, I don't know what happened to a lot of my stuff over the years. All disappeared. But there we are. I've got this one. As I say, I've got two of these valve ones. This one I haven't touched. There's a, the knob's missing. AF gain. Sadly, the knob's missing. But uh, chances of finding one are probably zero. But there we are, I shall have a search, keep searching, one day something might turn up. The other one I've got, I've uh, actually done a lot of work on it. I've re had to replace the, the dial drive cord on both. There's, this has got band spread, I forgot to mention that. I had to replace the dial drive cord, which was a, a challenging job, shall we say. Yeah, band spread. What you do, this is the course tuning, this is fine. So you tune in here on this top scale to your radio station, roughly. Then the band spread is uh, is this one. I'll show you that, just let that warm up. It's, it's rather a good feature, uh, especially on shortwave where you've got so many stations packed in together very closely. You know, you're tuning on this and it's very difficult to get it just right. So um, I'll show you when that warms up. This one has also, oh, let's just show you that now. You tune in roughly with that, and then this one, you see, it's very wide, like that. Whereas this top one, very, very critical. So uh, that's the idea. And of course, you know, you get a, a, sh a station somewhere on the shortwave band, just about tune into it, and then you can tune in properly with the band spread. It's a uh, a separate dial drive and uh, dial here all together. Rather nice. Someone's modified this one, which is a shame. They put the mains on off switch on the back. This should be the off position here and the another position around here. They've built in a crystal calibrator, which is great. It works uh, 1 meg and 100 kcs, kilohertz, which is great. It works, but it, you know, I like things to be original. I could put that back. Build a crystal calibrator by all means in a separate little unit. Have it on top or somewhere, or I don't know, do it somehow. But don't. What they've done here, the the on-off now, is the calibrator, and so is the another the send position here for the transmitter. They've modified that, um, which is a shame. So yeah, I I don't know whether it's a transistor calibrator or a valve one. I'm new. I don't think I've ever even taken the top off this. Uh, bought it for £30. I know that. I put labels on the back of things. I know what I paid. I usually write where it came from. And I haven't, so I can't remember. I've only had this a couple of years, and you know, I can't remember where it came from. Hopeless. I know it was £30, though. Can't be bad. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the band spread. It, the band spread only works on the, well, properly on the amateur bands. Here you've got a, a set position. When you set that there, then this scale here reads correctly. Um, I won't go into all that too much, but uh, basically then you've got this here, which covers the various amateur bands. It'll work outside the amateur bands, it's just that the, the dial reading is incorrect, but uh, really useful to have that band spread. Okay, that's the, the Lafayette. I keep dragging, as you probably notice, I keep dragging my old receivers out. I've got the Edistone 910 stroke one. I've done that video. The 19 set uh, made that video. Now the Lafayette. 
um, what is it, KT340. Um, what else? I've got a PCR receiver. You probably can't see it. Ele R1155 up there. I'll drag that one out perhaps one day and uh, give you a demonstration of that. So, uh, I'd, what I'd like, I've only got a small house. It'd be great to have a big house and one huge room which I could turn into a museum. Uh, you know, lock my wife out. <laughs> And uh, have all these radios all, all connected up, you know, have, have sort of aerial switch so you can switch the aerial to each one and, uh, you know, just, just go up long and turn each radio on one at a time, you know, and use them. It's all very well having stuff like this hidden away up in the attic or wherever, um, all wrapped up, but then what's the point? I think that's why I, I, I'm making a few videos so I can... I can at least watch my own videos and oh look, I've got one of those hidden in the loft. <laughs> anyway, happy days, there we are. There's my notes. Um, yeah, I'll have a look at this one. Try and find a knob for it. And uh, have a look at that crystal calibrator later, possibly. I won't make a, a video about that, shall I? Am I? How much of a nerd am I? Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you again. Bye-bye.